blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. If you die to be out of protocol tonight to reach God, I tell you your new season, your new season is here. The Lord said I'm healing you. The world break down. The saints should break forth for joy. With light and power and bigger vitality. And if Christ ever healed, he can heal today. The crusade of the century. Welcome the Archbishop Professor Benson in the house. Hallelujah! 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 Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, forevermore. Shout hallelujah. He came, he saw, and he conquered. Thank you.
saved. The first thing that bothered me most in Christianity was the inability for people to have a will to live. They accepted everything the devil brought their way as if it didn't matter. He gave them power against. It's not enough to come to church and rattle with your tongue. Do something with the power that Jesus gave you. If you are going to preach the gospel, don't imitate any man that failed. Don't be too humble to look like a man who failed. Look for a man who has succeeded. The only man who will criticize you and you listen, or you, or you, in your life, is the man that has done twice what you are trying to do once. The only person when he criticizes you and you say listen is the person that have done twice what you are trying to do once so when jesus called the first 12 disciples i love the place he said and when he had called the 12 he gave them power against For, but against power against all unclean spirit in Matthew's gospel chapter 10 verse 1 when he had called unto him his 12 disciples he gave them power against unclean spirit say with me power against, power against. i didn't hear you power did you say it power one more time power, power again all unclean spirits unclean spirits spirit. to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease amen when i got saved the first thing that bothered me most in christianity was the inability for people to have a will to live they accepted everything the devil brought their way as if it didn't matter. Here you are a man that previously had a nice home. The enemy came and attacked him, the house sold. Now he's living in rented house, it doesn't matter. Here you are a man that had a car and he's accidented and he's not insured. And he lost it. Now he's walking. He's trekking. It doesn't matter. Here you are with a man. Married with a lovely wife. They have four children. And the children grew up. Instead of the love to increase. They are fighting. The marriage is broken. It doesn't matter. Here you are a pastor with a church of 2,000 members. Some elders disagree with his doctrine. And disagree with his conduct. And disagree with his character. Not because he's seen, but because they are just angry that he's growing too much. And the church starts to fall from 2,000 to 1,000 to 500 to 200. And it doesn't matter. 
I began to look at Christians. When will it matter if it doesn't matter when it matters? <laughs> if everything God gave you is taken by the devil and it doesn't matter, when will it matter? Then people teach you and say, please take it easy. Others say, be, 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 be patient. The rest of them says, don't worry yourself. The Lord gave, the Lord took. So many negative training came to the body of Christ that I began to say, show me a man that has preached the gospel in this nation in the last 70 years that stood to the end with testimony of success. Many end up in bankruptcy. I can name at the tip of my finger. The biggest television ministry that started this country ended in bankruptcy. Evangelists ended in bankruptcy. Enemies came in, robbed them, the joy of success and testimony. And it looks and it seems as if God cannot continue in the life of continuity of success from beginning to the end. And yet... That is not God's character. God's character is He that has begun a good work in you will finish it. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's an attack of the devil upon the church as never before. The enemy has loosened hell. Every demon that is specialized in different areas of oppression have been sent on duty and yet the greatest nation in the face of the earth has become the headquarter of devil's oppression and the church is not even aware so what did jesus do when he called the 12 disciples he knew that the ministry you are involving the business you are involving the family you are involving will be attacked by the devil take jesus life for example no man ever lived in human flesh that suffered the attack that jesus suffered from when he was in the womb a law was enacted that when any boy is born in this city he should be killed he was attacked he finally was born when he was born there was no room in the inn he was born in a manger but thank god he didn't die in the manger as a young boy born in a manger his parents have not this is how i put it Benny. this will help you born poor attacked by the fools and sponsored by the wise fools want to kill christ the wise men came and brought gold silver frankincense out of that gold that the wise men brought his parents paid for transportation that took them to egypt did you hear me Fools want to kill him. Wise men came to take him away. Do you hear what I'm saying? Jesus believed in progressive growth. He was born in a manger. He died. Not in a manger. Buried in the best tomb the world has ever had. He had his first meal. In a manger, he had his last meal in an upper room. That's how to live. Start from the pit, end it upstairs. Did you hear what I'm saying? Start with a Volkswagen, end up with Cadillac. Don't ride a Mercedes and end with a bicycle. That is not God. God does not humiliate people, He can humble you. 
And any time God humble you is for himself, not for other people. The Bible says, humble yourself under the almighty God. It doesn't humiliate yourself before ABC or CNN or Ted Koppel. Did you hear what I'm saying? So when people are telling you, well, if you serve God, you can get to the peak and start to come now. That's not God. God is able to sustain to the end. Did you hear me? Let us become the first generation that believe that he that began a good work in us will finish it. Somebody shout hallelujah for me. Don't tell me every preacher that you know ended in disgrace, ended in shame, ended in debt, ended in sickness, ended in debt, ended in this, ended. No, God can through us by this conference mighty warriors conference say god we are ready to say to the devil stop it if you cheated those who didn't know what we know you can't cheat us somebody hear what i'm saying if others who live before us now i'm saying this to all of you who are pastors look at anahem hmm? i don't want to go by name this morning look at big pastors the first television pastor in this country ended in bankruptcy. I can confide in these people in the room and tell them the names I'm talking now. I don't think I trust you enough to tell you all. But it was not God that was not able to hold them to the end. Somewhere, somehow, after some years, the devil get jealous and say to them you can't make it to the end with success and because they don't know that they can stand to the end with success they fail so when Jesus called the first 12 disciples I love the place he said and when he had called the 12 he gave them power against not power for but against power against all unclean spirit poverty is not clean we have power against poverty sickness is not clean we have power against sickness attacked by the council and by the county and by the area and by the district and by the mayor and by the senator and by the worldly government attack from them is not clean and jesus gave us power against all unclean spirits somebody say hallelujah, hallelujah. I, I give you an illustration a story june this year i brought dr t.l osborne to nigeria for two months i prepared for a crusade big city crusade opening night 500,000 people came to the crusade the whole city the stadium everywhere jammed no road to pass the crusade has to start by 7 people started arriving there by 11 a.m. the following morning the team of Nigeria wants to play Cameroon so we cannot use the stadium the next night because the team that came killed the grass the crowd was too much that the grass on the field were killed so the crusade is cancelled they know me now you can't do that you can't do that you can't do that so i went to the stadium my tv crew all the scaffold of our light of our microphone removed and i said fine i went on tv and radio i announced if you do not let us use the stadium thunder and lightning will come down this night no football match and the match will be cancelled and rain with four 24 hours and you you done wrong to me Hallelujah. 
in three hours. Idahosa, we are sorry. Idahosa, we are sorry. Idahosa, we are sorry. Idahosa, we are sorry. 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 Power against. Power against. Everybody say power against. What do you think mighty warriors meant? Hamburger in the pulpit? One of the prophets was coming to town. He just lost his hair. And the boy said, uh uh, look at the bald head man. And the prophet says, Is that what your parents taught you? Lion, come out and devour him. And the Bible said, Lion came and devoured the boy. And fear came. What did Peter do to Ananias and Sapphira? The money didn't belong to the church, it belonged to Ananias and Sapphira. But if you join the church, be loyal to the church. They told lies. So Peter said, fine. The money was your own. Ananias and Sapphira did not die because they paid half money, but because they told lies. You didn't hear what I'm saying? Peter says, is it how much you sold? He said, yeah. He said, fine. You lied to the Holy Ghost. Right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> His wife came. Safara, your husband said you sold your house. Is it how much you sold it? Oh, yes. Yes, my darling. Okay. The feet of them that bury your husband have not been washed. Go. Some of you are so entangled with religion that you think religion is Christianity Christianity is power say power. power and they gave me equipment and helped me to move to another stadium when we moved the attendance doubled same day then they begged me to pray for the footballers I prayed for them I prophesied that they are going to Nigeria with defeat the other country because they apologized to me and I said two goals to kneel and we scored two goals to kneel. Wow. You don't just wake up and say, oh, that's the man of God, the next man to attack. He died. He gave them power against. It's not enough to come to church and rattle with your tongue. Do something with the power that Jesus gave you. Don't play with your life. He gave them power against. Power against. Unclean spirits. A pastor in Phoenix took offering for me five nights, twenty-seven thousand. When I was going, he gave me two thousand. I said, "You took this offering for Africa?" He said, "Yes, that's what we got." I said, five nights?" He said, "Yeah, give me." I said, "Well," I said, "Thank you." <laughs> I said, "If that's what you got, hallelujah. But if that's not, bye bye." <laughs> The third week I left, minor rain fell. Heavy wind came and took the roof of his church. Half a million lost. When you are dealing with this man, you are dealing with a dangerous man. This is not banana leaf. That's a man of God. This is a man of God. This is a man of God. Don't deal with them as you are dealing with worldly people. When you touch them, you are touching the anointed. It's a covenant I have from God. If you touch me, you finish. This is not cheap. That dangerous zone. If you have nothing good to say, shut your mouth. Father, from today, I put the anointing in the hand of God.
in Jesus' name, we decree that any hand that stretched to this life that is wrong to cause destruction and death shall not succeed. But your mouth shall be the flame of fire. What you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What you lose on earth is lost in heaven. In the name of Jesus, you have the anointing that no one shall touch you and go free. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That's it. Be careful from today. Don't go near. Unless if you have good things to say. He gave them power to war against. What do you think Jesus meant when he said power against all unclean spirits? I went to a city and some press men arranged for a woman to hide in my hotel room. Huh? I went to bed, I started sleeping. But two hours later, somebody had a mental problem from the wardrobe. Fire! 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 I said, watch fire. I checked the bathroom. I didn't think anybody could be in the wardrobe. When she was crying, fire, 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 fire. I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm burning. I heard the sound. I opened the door, nothing. Finally, I decided to open the wardrobe. Here was a woman, all the shirts burnt to ashes with fire. Hallelujah. Don't try it. 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 He gave them power against unclean spirits. She came out, the dress torn, her skin peeling. I said, what happened? Why, why did you have it? He said, press men gave me money. To say, when you start sleeping, I should come out of the wardrobe and lie with you. So they can say you committed adultery. She went to hospital. Seven days later, she died. Touch not my anointed. I'm sorry, I'm telling you dangerous stories this morning. But that's the gospel. That's the gospel. What you are used to is hanky panky, double decker, banana cheese message. <laughs> Why did he give them power to cast out devils, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to open blind eyes? I never go to a crusade without miracle happening. You come to my city, my house is like train station. People, night and day, government, kings, nobles, touch me, touch me, touch me, touch my robe, touch my hand, touch my head. That's what they come for. And it works. I say it works. If you are going to be involved in a ministry that will bring glory to God, Get out of washy, washy sermons. Find where God is doing something lively. And be a part of that thing. There's no need for a pastor to come and say, Oh, well, we've been in this city for five years. Demons didn't let us succeed. What? Demons? Witches can't let us succeed. Who? Witches? Light and darkness. Light and darkness. Who run from the other? Say darkness. There's a story I was told. They said there's a land where there's never sunlight. 24 hours every day. 
And so somebody came to visit his son and said, There's a city. We are told that every day of the year is dark. So son said, Let me go there and see. So son left S U N, left home and said, Let me go see that land. He came and spent three months looking for that land. He couldn't find. So he said, I've been here for three months. I'm looking for darkness. You didn't hear my story. They said, how could you find it? He said, you told me that the place is always dark every day. I've been here three months. I've never seen darkness. And they said, until you leave, darkness will never come back. Amen. How many will say amen to that? Amen. He gave them power against did you hear what I'm saying? Against unclean spirit. He gave them power. We were going to build our first miracle center church. Can you be writing all I'm saying since when you come? A very big man in the land's office. A neighbor who owned the land next to him, to us, gave him money and said, Tell the government not to approve the building plan for us. can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. and remove all the pegs of the building of the foundation I went to him like a man I said friend this is not my house this is God's house don't take the pegs away it belongs to God I said no you are violating the rules you are doing I said excuse me you can't do it He said, why not? I said, well, bye-bye. <laughs> I said, if you leave us alone, you keep your job. If you don't leave us alone, I move you. He said, you don't work in the government. I said, I move you. Because God gave me power to bind and to lose. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
He gave them power against all unclean spirits. I said, friend, this is not my house. If you remove the peg of my house, fine. But this is God's house. He said, who is God? I said, oh my God. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> but the Spirit told me that that man is going to become my friend. So I drove to his office. I went to the boss. I said, I'm here in anger. I said, somebody has disturbed my spirit and he's touching God. He's touching me. He said, who? I gave him the name. He said, don't be angry. The man that was the overall head for the state pleaded with me. I said, okay. Bye-bye. I left. The next morning, they moved him from Orlando, so to say, to Fort Lauderdale. They transferred him. And he said, I'm not going. So the boss said, you lose your job. Either you go or you lose your job. He said, I'm going. He left. Six months later, he saw me. He said, Dr. Idahosa, I want to apologize to you for what I did. I said, okay, do you want to come back? He said, yes. I took telephone. I called his boss. They brought him back. <laughs> so when we needed money to put roof, he gave me $200. For the same building, he said you couldn't build. He gave them power against unclean spirits. You playing with the gospel. You are joking with the gospel. Jesus said, the prince of the darkness of this world has come. He has no part in me. If you, I thank God for this conference. If it wasn't for this conference, Christianity in America had three months left. By January, all of you would have been in greater trouble than you ever had. But thank God, mighty warriors conference. Can somebody say hallelujah? It has almost become fearful for a pastor to ride good car now in America to own good home because the press is coming. We can stop it. I say we can stop it. I say we can stop it. We can stop it. Devil, stop it. Devil, stop it. He gave them power against unclean spirit. Remember my first message in
I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you.
is, is not enough to use the name of Jesus turning around and falling and getting up. As child's play. Child's play. Jesus I see Satan coming from heaven like lightning. That's in the Bible. I saw Satan falling down from heaven like lightning. That's real spirit of demons. Don't go back from Orlando gambling with the name of Jesus. Go back mighty warrior. Hallelujah! <laughs> mighty warriors! Let everybody say, you are no more afraid. Say, yeah, I resign. I quit. Say, I resign. From fear club, from dying club, from being afraid, I resign, I quit, Jesus, in me, the hope of glory, hallelujah, mighty warrior, that's why you are here. To learn how to fire up, and you get back to your town and be in church. Yes. So, devil, government change hand. Yes. Government change hand. Devil, I bow to you enough. Fear, fear me. Everybody say that. Fear. fear. for fear to hear me coming and say oh, the outside is on the way <laughs> <laughs> that's why you must not clap as if you are in the grave that's why you must not sing as if you are having funeral it takes the power and the anointing of God to sing Dr. Hen and I were talking when Reverend Big John Hall was singing I said look at the talent this height alone should frighten the devil. If you do not improve on your gift, your gift will be lost. Amen. If you don't use your talent, your talent vanish. Walk while he's there. For night cometh when no man shall walk again. There's no city in America that needs storytelling pastors. They need devil casters. There is no city in America that needs noise-making pastors. They need devil-casting pastors. Can I tell you a secret? Then I quit. I want to tell you a secret, then I quit. You know when problem came to TV ministry? When all the big TV stars began to consult Los Angeles trick stars for style of how to get money from the people. 1970, 1985, the big ministries in America began to employ the services of the trick stars in Los Angeles to teach them how to sit on TV how to cry how to write mailing letters that is trickish how to appeal for money so none of them prayed anymore they began to learn tricks and the devil took advantage of their doing it in human ways instead of god's way So they, they employ experts to tell you when to cry in the middle of your program. Experts to tell you how to bring your face, how to appeal for money, no gospel. And the devil said, fine, I gave it to you, I will take it from you. 
they left God's business to serve tables. Nobody was talking again about missions. They substituted their vision with the ambition. So they gained ambition and lost vision. And that's what ruined TV. And even the biggest name on TV today deny that they are Christian station. He gave them power against all unclean spirit. Go back to your church after Sunday. Tell them a new man have come from Orlando. And now the revival, revival, revival. Bring the deaf, bring the blind, bring the dumb, bring the sick, bring the lame. Lay hand. They shall recover. Heal all manners. Go back and preach prosperity. Prosperity is not from Tulsa. It's from Jesus. And it's not a white man's gospel. It's Bible gospel. Some of you blacks say, uh, the reason I'm poor is because I'm black. It's not because you are black, because you are a dummy. <laughs> Stop noise making. Use your brain. Use your hand. The Bible says I shall bless the labor of your hands. There's no difference between Big John Hall and myself. One head, one head. Two eyes, two eyes. Two hands, two hands. Two legs, two legs. What's the difference? The use of the brain. You put your brain in the freezer, it doesn't work. Put it to work, it gives you results. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And any pastor specialized in funeral service can never have revival. Any pastor specialized in funeral service, in funeral service, can never have revival. So let the dead bury the dead. There are many pastors that will be here, but they are going to have funeral this week. I don't bury the dead. If I pray for you to get up, you refuse, someone else bury you. That's why I have 5,000 pastors. I come, I say, brother, get up, your job has not finished. I say, get up, you refuse. Second time, get up. I take my Bible, I leave. I say, Pastor John, take care of him. I was not called for the dead, I'm called for the living. Can you say amen? amen? Some of you are so used to memorial service, funeral service, you are not used to revival. It's time for you to be used to revival. Go back from Orlando. They say, Why did Benny Hen why did you go to Benny Hen's church? I went there to bring a sword home to tell the devil shut. Everything that was against you, listen to this. This is going to be my last statement of the beginning. I'm coming back here. Coming back. Sorry, my convention starts in Africa today. 52,000 people are coming. Why did you go to Orlando? I went there to collect power against everything that was against me. You hear me? Yes, yes. All my friends now are those who believe in what I'm doing. If you don't believe in what I'm doing, you want to take my life? I report to headquarters. They take care of you. Yes. If what happened to Jimbeka happened in Africa, the government would be on fire. My people wouldn't let that nonsense happen. Oh, 
Of course, anybody that tried to touch you now is touching God. <laughs> you say bye-bye. <laughs> This message and a collection of other messages are available at Iwo Media Services. Iwo Media Services, inspirational, world-class production. messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like a son we see a father who 
He trusts that he's faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was the Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. a person yet he was so human in nature a man who reached out to everyone the high and the low in society a man who rubbed shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the Word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria and I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief. Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told, in the preach, he said, This is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then, many, a, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop. My first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Unicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Onicha. And we went to put posters all over Onicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, or Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, 
requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, actually I went there in 79, my class started in 1980, and uh, we went through the Bible training and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Hose University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us. And I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. And um, people of faith are few in Britain. But if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from, Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain, because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy sure Dausa. We said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft, lifted his I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said, God, you called me. And you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the sea. We have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. Now, this is where the testimony is. Mama, if the house was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Bini? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Ibnidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here, there won't be any such meeting. 
the chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974, 75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign, wonder, anointing, and his boldness. I was, I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me the Aztecs and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. Oh, and all on 
And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. And the people say, Ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he please, I beg you. Don't don't make a mockery of your God. He said, No, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that uh, uh, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions and to raise the dead and I said listen don't make a mockery of yourself the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal that sick raise the dead I said what Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood, at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? I send it to your throne. What's the girl's name? I will send it to I said, It's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Benson Idahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson in the outside. He said, what is happening? He told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve 
can raise him come back to life? My father said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> and then they died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> With him to the mother. He said, Please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, What is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? You said the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, oh, 
let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, we prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer. And that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there, were, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two guys, and two boys and six guys. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. 
simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938. To a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and United States while working in Bada Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Aquas on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, ben young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell 
to his nails before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He pray through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981, from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robert University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife Margaret Idaosa were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supertax. So winning was in Daosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA. I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. 
I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981, his Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to African as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christian in their own land. It also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors and he applied the principles he learned he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry he was very energetic hard-working one of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa he was committed and consistent and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom have bishop bensi idaosa was said to be the leader of over seven million jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the lord in february 1998 now i'm going to talk about his early ministry again as a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. 
Your attitude determine your your attitude determines your altitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of his son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the Church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video, to bless all the people. And make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contacts, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.